What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and in today's video we're going to be revisiting an older topic that I've already covered. This over here, how to download and install FFmpeg on Windows 10. A year and a month have passed, it's got quite a few views and unfortunately the download method has changed, meaning that this video guide is outdated. This website showcased in the video, zerono.com, was hosted by a Redditor and unfortunately it closed on September 18th. 2020. Thank you for your help to the community and hopefully this video will help you. So we're going to be going through downloading, installing and getting FFmpeg to work everywhere on your Windows 10 computer in November 2020 and onwards. If the download links are changed again, make sure to let me know and I'll get to making another updated video. So similarly to the previous video, simply head across to FFmpeg.org, then click download and we take into this page here. Hover over the Windows icon and then select either Gyan.dev or BTBN. I'll be opening up both these tabs as one of these websites may go down sometime in the future. Simply pick one of these two. So Gaian over here has a couple of downloads. There are four specific sections, Git Full, Git Essentials, Release Full and Release Essentials. The ones with Git before them are built from the master branch and Release are built from the latest release, meaning that they should be more stable. Full versus Essential simply means that the full version comes with a large set of libraries and the Essentials comes only with commonly used libraries. Depending on what you need, you can download either of these. So if you'd like the cutting edge, stick to the git downloads which should be at the very top over here. Otherwise scroll down further to the release section over here and download either full or essentials by clicking on one of these. .7z files are the same as the zip file over here but they're much more compressed as you can see. If I download this one over here, all we have to do is click details and visit the site if you see that it might contain dangerous or harmful programs. It doesn't. These are simple FFmpeg builds that are officially advertised on the official FFmpeg site. This 7z file opens up like any other zip file, except you'll need 7zip or another advanced unzipping program to open it up. But to keep the file, unfortunately, I can't click accept here. I have to click show all or head across to my download section over here and then click keep dangerous file keep anyway, and then we can open it up with 7-zip if we already have it installed. If you don't have 7-zip, simply head across to the second link in the description down below and download the Windows 64-bit installer for 7-zip. Then double click on the 7z file when it's done installing and you should be able to open it up in something like this. But before we run through the install process, let's check the other download website. This BTBN download site over here. As you can see, there's a ton more choice. All of these are the Windows 64 builds, but you'll see GPL or LGPL, general public license or lesser general public license. The difference between licenses will also mean a difference between libraries and support inside of FFmpeg. As far as I know, this one over here was built with the GPL license as if I open up the zip file, head into the folder, drag and drop the license out and open it in something like Notepad, you'll see that it's the general public license. So I would assume that the ones with just GPL will be the most similar to the other download site. I would avoid downloading LGPL unless you know the difference. These two over here. GPL Vulkan and simply just GPL. Vulkan adds Vulkan support, which FFmpeg added sometime back in March. As for a performance difference, I have absolutely no idea, unfortunately. Then the final most important difference is the file name at the very beginning. The one with a very long number and a capital N are the nightly builds or simply the builds that are taken straight off the GitHub source and built from there. The ones with N followed by 4.3.1-25 or something like that are the official releases that have been built and packaged up. Again, we see GPL, LGPL, as well as just a normal one and one with shared. Now, I would assume that the shared one uses libraries that already exist on your PC. So simply downloading this one over here would be the best for the full release and this one over here would be the best for the nightly release. After you pick it, simply click on it to download it and we can open it up without the need for something like 7-zip. Of course, the download will be a bit bigger. When you do eventually download it and open up one of the zips or 7-zip files, you'll see a folder inside of it. Opening it up, we have presets, doc, bin, readme and license. What we're really interested in here is the bin folder as it contains the built FFmpeg binaries. So let's get to installing. First of all, hit start E to bring up a new file explorer and head across to your C drive. Of course, you can put this anywhere, but the easiest thing to do would be to put it in C, followed by say, path programs, or simply a folder named FFmpeg. I already have it installed here. All you have to do is simply drag and drop the FFmpeg exes into a known location on a drive. So for me, FFmpeg is now installed in C path underscore programs, FFmpeg as such. Let's go ahead and add it to our system so that it recognizes where this file is. I'll hit start and type in path. Then we'll click 
edit the system environment variables. After this window opens up, simply head across to environment variables at the very bottom. Then we'll locate path under user variables. Otherwise, if you'd like it to apply for all users, simply select it under system variables, path as such. Simply pick one and then click edit. We have a huge list of files and folders over here. I already have it added. I'll go ahead and select it and click delete to remove it. All you have to do is click new at the very top and then type in the file location. You can, of course, simply select the file location at the top, copy the text and paste it into the window here. After doing that, simply hit enter or click anywhere else, click OK and OK once again. After closing out of the system properties window, we've now successfully installed FFmpeg. How do we know it's installed? Well, we simply check with command prompt, hold down start, press R, and then simply type in CMD. After this black console window opens up, type in FFmpeg. After hitting enter, you'll see a whole bunch of text returned back to you. This is coming from the FFmpeg binary inside of this folder over here. We can simply type in the file name as we've added this folder here to the known locations where it should check file names. And that's about it, you're basically done. At this point, if you have a script such as a batch file that converts a bunch of video or audio, you can simply double click on it. It'll run and use the FFmpeg inside of this folder over here, assuming that there aren't conflicts with FFmpeg binaries inside of other path folders or inside of the folder with the actual script in it. That's about it for this video. If you're interested in using FFmpeg to quickly remix video, do check the description down below. Other than that, my name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.